The question says a badge is put by two tugboats. If the resultant of the forces exerted by the tugboats is a 5,000 newton force directed along the axis of the badge, determine A says the tension in each rope if alpha equal to 45 degrees, B the value of alpha for the tension in rope 2 to be minimum. Okay, now how do we solve this question here? Now, if you look at this, first things first, we have a we have so we call this we have both a and both c so we call the tensions in the string right in each rope t a and t c t a is the tension connecting a and b y t c is the tension in the rope connecting b and c okay t a is the tension in the rope connecting a and b and t c is the tension in the rope connecting b and c as you can see here so let's get a free body diagram first so in this diagram, observe that what I have here is actually, you have a boot here. So just use a line there, um, just this line, something of this nature. Okay, we'll get a point B from where the two ropes are connected. We'll call this point B. So let's get this as B. Okay, next up, what we have there is C A going this way, or the rope A. We'll have rope A going this way. And then we'll now have BC, that's B going this way. All right, so we have this. And for the angles, what we have there is 30 degrees. So we're giving the angle here, giving this angle here as 30 degrees, and giving this as alpha. All right, so we have this. All right, so what next? Um, for this question, what we we'll use here is actually called, we we'll use something called parallelogram's law of vectors, okay? What, what exactly is parallelogram's law of vectors and what does it say? Now, parallelogram's law of vectors states that if two vectors are represented in magnitude and direction by the adjacent sides of a parallelogram, then the diagonal drawn from their point of intersection represents the resultant vector in magnitude and direction. Okay, so we are saying basically, if I have a parallelogram, something of this nature, something like this, and this, of course, to make this a parallelogram, we'll just have to do this, and they'll now have to do this, something of this nature, all right? So that we'll call this part point A and point B. Then they said the diagonal drawn from their point of intersection. The point of intersection of A and B is this point here, and we're saying that the diagonal, so from here, a diagonal is a line that causes a shape into two equal parts. So this now represents your resultant. Basically, this is how this works. And if this is a resultant, for a parallelogram, this part is equal to this part, and this part is equal to this part. So here, hence here becomes B. So basically, this is how this works. So in essence, for this, so let's apply this in solving our question. So in this particular question here, you are asked to find so in this particular question here, you ask to find the tension in each rope. So how do you do that? We use parallelogram's law of vectors. We said this point here is T A. That's the this is your point A. Okay. And then we now have this point C. And what we have here is T C. Okay. So we have this. So if you convert this now to a parallelogram, we'd have something of this nature that we we'll just have to do this, change to a parallelogram, something of this nature. Uh, let's say it stops here. And then this one here goes and stops here. So you can see my parallelogram here. And we said for a parallel from parallelogram's law of vectors that the diagonal or the, yeah, the diagonal from the point of intersection, which is this, represents the resultant vector in magnitude and direction. So I'm having a case of this. Again, we said that this part here, TC, is equal to what there? This part here, which is TC. That's tension in C. If we use the concept of trigonometry, we know that this angle here is equal to this angle here and if we said alpha from the question from the question here they said alpha is equal to for a part is 45 degrees that means the angle here is equal to 45 degrees so we have this and this part becomes your resultant we'll call this arrow our final tax will now be to get the value of this angle here if i pick this up you can see that we have a triangle that looks like this a chunk that looks like um, this part here, this part here, then 
I have this part here. Okay, what we said here is your resultant R to the left is TA, so we have TA here, tension in A, then we have tension in C. This angle here, we have it as 30 degrees. This is 30 degrees. This angle here, we have it as 45 degrees. So this is 45 degrees. So how do we get the upper angle? How do we get this angle here? Well, that's quite simple. For the upper angle, we know that some of angles in the triangle is equal to 180 degrees. We're saying that 30 degrees plus 45 degrees plus, if we call this x, it becomes plus x is equal to 180 degrees. All right, that's basic trigonometry. If you combine this, we have that 75 degrees is equal to x plus x plus x is equal to 180 degrees. So x is equal to 180 minus 75. And x is equal to, so let's punch 180 minus 75. If you punch 180 minus 75, your answer will be 105 degrees. All right, so you have this. In essence, for this case here, this angle here is actually equal to 105 degrees. All right, so I have this as my angle. All right, what next here? If you look at this from the question again, they said the resultant force of the the resultant of the forces exerted by the tugboat is 5,000 newton. That means in this question here, they give you resultant C R or the R there as equal to 5,000 newton. All right, so we have this. So how do we solve this question? I'll just take this off very fast. How do we solve this question here? If you're conversant with um, trigonometry, right? Or if you're conversant with the normal geometry in mathematics, you know for this case here, what we use here is actually sine rule. We use the sine rule for this. Now, sine rule says that a particular side, for instance, CA, so we have CA all over sine of the angle facing it. The angle facing TA, as you can see here, the, the angle opposite it is actually 45 degrees. So all over 45 degrees, so all over sine 45 is equal to, let's get the other side, which is TC, all over sine of the angle facing it, which is simply this one here. So all over sine 30 becomes TC, TC all over sine 30 is equal to, finally we now have R, which is this all over sine of the angle facing it. That's arrow all over sine 105. Arrow all over sine 105. All right, so basically this is how sine works, okay? Decide all over the angle facing it. Now in solving this, we'll just take them in pairs. So I'll take TA and this one first. That becomes TA all over sine 45. Sine 45, it's equal to R all over sine 105, sine 105. Let's solve this. To solve this, the simple concept is that TA will be equal to, I'll move this over here. That becomes R times sine 45 all over sine 105. You can say cross multiply and solve. That's the same. You have the same answer. R is 5,000. That becomes 5,000 sine 45 all over sine 105 that means ta it's equal to let's punch this 5000 sine 45 divided by sine 105 what you have here as ta is equal to 33660 Point two five. Since it's tension, tension is a force on a stretched string or a rope, so it's still a force. That's in Newton. So I have three six six zero point two five Newton. Let's get TB. For TB, we'll just take this other two. 
Uh, let's get TC. For TC, we'll just take this other two there, which is TC over sine 30. That gives us TC all over sine 30. It's equal to R all over sine 105. See the same thing, okay? To get TC, we simply say, move this man here over this way. We'll have that TC is equal to um, R sine, that's R times sine 30, which is R sine 30 all over sine 105. We'll have this. That's equal to R is 5000. So 5000 sine 30 all over sine 105. Let's put values. What's TC? From here, TC is equal to 5000 sine 30. Sine 30 all over sine 105. That gives you 2588.19 Newton approximately. All right, so this is the value of TA and TC. That's the, which represents the angle on the string. All right, so we've gotten the first part. That was the eight parts we asked to find. Yep, the tension in each rope, we've gotten that. The next one is to find the value of alpha for the tension in rope two to be minimum. All right, the value of alpha for the tension in rope two to be minimum. So how do you solve that question? I'll just take this off and let's see how we can solve that question. The B part says the value of alpha for the tension in rope 2 to be minimum. Now, here's what to note. For the value of the tension in rope 2 to be minimum, the value of alpha or the condition here is that the angle between both of the tension should be right angle. That's 90 degrees. In essence, for the tension in the rope to be minimum, the angle between them, like this, this angle here, should be equal to 90 degrees. That's the condition. So here should be what there? 90 degrees. You have this as 90 degrees. This is the condition there. And this, if this is so, we ask to find the value of alpha, which is this one here. And if you go back to my initial diagram, alpha was this angle here, which was 45 degrees, which became this one here. That means this angle will have to change. So if I change that angle, that means this 45 will no longer be 45, but a different angle. So what will be the new angle? That's what, the, that's what you're asked to find. All right, the, the value of alpha for the tension in the rope to be minimum. All right, so but get the concept for the tension in the rope to be minimum, the angle between the two tensions like this should be what there 90 degrees. That's the concept. All right, so you have this 90. So if this is 90 degrees, let's find the value of um, the new alpha. We'd have that 30 degrees plus 90 degrees plus the value of the new alpha is equal to 180 degrees because sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. This becomes 120 plus alpha equal to 180 degrees. So from here, what's alpha? Alpha will be equal to 180 minus 120. So alpha is equal to 60 degrees. So in essence, here becomes 60 degrees. So that's how you solve this question. All right, so guys, basically this is how you solve this question, okay? You can get access to my other classes on applied mechanics from my website. Simply visit www.jonahimari.com forward slash courses and check for the second year undergraduate one course where you get access to my full courses on applied mechanics as well as other courses. Or you can simply join my channel membership, okay? So you can join the second year undergraduate membership. I'll leave a link to both my website and to join my channel membership in the video description. All right, so check the video description for the link to my website as well as my channel membership, okay? All right, guys. So as usual, if you enjoyed this video, do well to hit the like button, all right? So like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, all right? Tell us if you enjoyed this video. Also, if you have any observation, leave it in the, co in the comment section. If you have any question too, leave it in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if it's your first time or you're yet to subscribe. If you've not yet subscribed, please do well to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon. Hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we upload the new content. And then finally, share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. 
Thank you and see you in our next class.